need to take care of a couple of uh, loose ends. So we noticed that um, the uh, the sheets were referring back to the uh, to the first sheet. So it was one of the first things that I checked when I started making this uh, this custom template. And even in your uh, standard, and it well, it may have um, uh, come over and been a residual from the default. So whether you're going into one of the um, the included uh, SolidWorks templates, we'll go over to the drawing sheets and make sure that this uh, multi-sheet custom property source is unchecked. All right, so since that's part of my, I want to say it's saved in the document template, this would be a good place to do a save as and try to get it to um, um, to remain unchecked. Okay, so if I get out of that, save it, and then um, go back in, the quick check will be to go back to that location. And so there's things that even though I've checked them off the list, um, in the process of creating the sheet format, in the process of going through all of that, um, what that would save me, or what that would have saved me from doing, is going sheet by sheet in my um, in my document, um, in my drawing, and unchecking that little box uh, um, in the properties uh, manually. So that'll just be grayed out, and it will um, be treated as if it's um, it's already taken care of. All right, so going back into the property tab builder, uh, notice that uh, my custom properties weren't quite updating the way that I expected them to. So let's go to the drawing template. Oh, actually, I wanted to go to the um, the part template. There's not much in the uh, the drawing template. Got drawing templates on the mind. All right, so part numbers. Um, Let's just uh, stay with the uh, the text box as being uh, safe. And since this is going to be uh, a reference dimension, it's not anything that we can really change. It's more of a placeholder uh, that we can go uh, get the, have SolidWorks get the information and then, uh, then apply it. So we're going to wait and its value will be the SolidWorks mass and it will be placed on uh, that. So anytime I need to uh, to make this adjustment, we'll save. Uh, then it probably is not going to update right away in the um, in the part or the assembly. So we're going to have to um, uh, encourage it. I guess is a good way to put it. So into the text box and then mass. And the name is to the weight, and the value is the SolidWorks mass. Make sure to save it. Okay, having gone through that, if I go back to my, let's see, I know probably the um, uh, the driver wheel may have been one of the ones that didn't get a, uh, a mass applied. All right, so part number, material revision, finish, no uh, no weight slash mass. So come over here, I don't see the little box. So at the bottom is this little click for template options. And for whatever reason, you change it to none and hit OK. It pops up mass in grams, 202.77. When we apply that now, and when I go to the file properties, I'm going to see that it was added to this list, which is where it was referenced from. So it's um, I'm going to have to pretty much do that for each of the parts, but at least now going forward, it's a uh, semi-automated process. Uh, so my open recent, uh, let's grab the uh, grab the drawing, and we'll start checking for uh, for these updates. All right, so it's going to go through and, and calculate. Um, so let's see, went to there, so no weight in that one. So I'd have to do pretty much the same thing. Open it. Just make sure that, um, well, I guess I didn't apply anything to that one. So if I were to just uh, apply, 
uh, it would it would have that uh, base information and uh, something else that I have to go through and uh, update. Now the uh, interesting one on that. Let's uh, let's double check. Go to the custom properties. We have the part number, the file properties, and the part number is applied. But apparently didn't see it come over. So control B for rebuild. All right. So anytime those um, associative properties are not coming across or not updating, uh, go ahead and do a rebuild, which is the little stoplight or control B on the, uh, the keyboard. So I'm almost uh, done with this drawing, ready for review, design review, check, uh, another set of eyes looking at it. Um, you know, at the very least, I'm going to walk away from it for a couple hours to a day and come back with a, uh, a fresh perspective and um, be able to uh, to look. Uh, so maybe in this case the annotations will go with the uh, the notes and if I put that on the dims layer then um, that would look a little bit better and have a little more contrast F6 to turn the, uh, the filter off. Um, looks like most all of my information got put in there and kind of go through and it's starting to look like um, you know pretty decent uh, drawing so the note didn't uh, update with uh, the dim layer so a little more consistent but since I manually changed uh, that text then it's going to need to go back to the default which should be hmm, not sure what that should be <laughs> Uh, since it's on the dims layer, it should uh, fall into uh, into the standard. So, well, I think that gets it there. But I'm I'll have to double check that one when I apply the notes. Next set of notes. All right. So the next step after this would be to go through and do a geometric analysis, which pretty much beyond the scope of what we're wanting to do. Let's see. So the rev didn't update there, uh, but we are getting revisions. Uh, so let's um, let's take one of these in the process of doing uh, maybe the geometric or analysis or stack up of tolerances. Uh, maybe we decide that uh, one of these needs to be a little bit longer. So I open this uh, this up, and I'm responsible for uh, managing the uh, the revs. So instead of 10 millimeters, I'm going to make this one 12 millimeters. Now that has the potential since um, the assembly, depending on how the uh, the arm was related, that shaft may. Uh, may update uh, in a weird way, but now we're going to tell it we're at Rev B, and I don't know, this is part, probably part um, 7, we can override it, I believe, so 007, and the finish will stay with raw. Now, finish in this case is um, uh, like a, a plating or a coating. Uh, if we did uh, surface finish, then we would... Um, you know, something like this that need to be really smooth, we might give it a 16 to 32 micro finish and everything else would have uh, a 63 minimum or 128 micro inch uh, finish. So um, that's something else that I would consider as we go through, we add things to our, our list and are updating as we go. All right, so in through multiple iterations, we refine this and didn't see it update, so control B. And I applied it, but I uh, thought I applied it. Well, let's go back and check. So rev B, applied, go check, revision B, make sure it didn't uh, end up in the custom properties because if you have dual uh, file properties and the custom properties in the configuration, a lot of times the custom will uh, take priority. All right, so not sure which one that did. All right, so let's go properties, 
make sure it's not uh, going with the default. Well, let's double check which one because there's no revision. Oops. Um, edit sheet format was what I was looking for. There's no revision. And now it updates. <laughs> so I didn't give it enough time to uh, to think about it. All right. So anyway, there's, uh, there's still little things that are going to sneak up on you. Um, always seem to be... Um, uh, getting a little bit closer, watching for the information, check, double check, and recheck.